In 1504, Christopher Columbus is said to have used a total lunar eclipse to scare and trick the indigenous people of Jamaica into believing he had godlike powers. Since then, it has been considered one of the most significant events that shaped Jamaican history. But here's the thing. Lunar eclipses happen regularly, yet they vary in terms of the path of the moon, its perceived size, and the depth of the eclipse. But they also follow cycles, and while similar eclipses occur periodically, an almost identical eclipse takes 521 years to repeat itself. This means that the eclipse that Columbus and the Taina saw in 1504 returned to Jamaica again on the 14th of March 2025. I thought this was a fantastic opportunity to check if that story with Columbus and the Taino actually happened, how we know about it, and whether it is true that in March 2025, we can experience, quote, a celestial déjà vu that echoes across more than five centuries. So first, let me share the story of how Christopher Columbus supposedly tricked the native Taino. Columbus first landed in Jamaica in 1494, but it was on his fourth voyage when his ships became too damaged to sail and he ended up in Jamaica on the 25th of June, 1503. Together with his crew, he was stranded in St. Anne's Bay for over a year. Some of his men rebelled, attempting to escape to Hispaniola in Taina canoes, but failed. And to make things worse, the governor of Hispaniola, who despised Columbus, refused to send aid and rescue them. Columbus maintained good relations with the Taino at the time to secure food for his men. It is said that initially they provided supplies, but over time they lost interest in trade as the Spaniards demanded way more food than the Taino were ready to bring. After witnessing the Spanish rebellion, the Taino distrusted Columbus, believing claims he planned to kill them and stopped supplying food completely. Columbus faced a dilemma. Taking food by force meant war, which he couldn't win, but waiting for someone to help was not an option either. So instead, he came up with a solution. As an experienced sailor, he had a copy of astronomical tables and he knew that the eclipse was coming up, so he decided to use that to manipulate the local Taino people. Uh, sorry, not manipulate to be a hero and rescue his men from starvation because some uncivilized locals refused to give them all their food. One of those uncivilized happened to be an unnamed Taino from Hispaniola who spoke local languages and Spanish fluently and translated the message from Columbus to the Taino leaders in Jamaica. The message of Columbus was a warning, saying that, quote, his Christian God was angry, not only at the rebel Spaniards, but at the locals as well for withholding food. He declared that God will punish them with famine and plague. As proof, God will send a sign in the sky that night, a blood red moon. Some locals dismissed this as nonsense, but when the lunar eclipse began, fear spread and as the moon darkened, the Taino panicked, rushing to Columbus with food and begging for mercy. Columbus demonstrably prayed to his God and as the eclipse ended, he told them, God had forgiven you. Convinced Columbus had divine insight, the Taino resumed supplying food. And from that moment on, Columbus and his crew were well fed. The rescue came on the 29th of June, 1504, and they finally left Jamaica. So that's the story, and I find it fascinating, but for a very different reason. You see, it makes it sound as if the Taino were totally ignorant savages who had no understanding of the concept of a lunar eclipse and had never seen a blood moon before. 
while the intelligent and educated Europeans used the signs of astronomy and the superstition of the locals, you know, for their survival. Well, it is true that there was a total lunar eclipse in Jamaica at that time. But what I find particularly interesting is that we know that Taino followed a lunar calendar. They heavily relied on different phases of the moon for agriculture and did tributes and ceremonies in accordance with the moon. These practices were recorded by the Spanish themselves, I mean the contemporaries of Columbus. So how could the Taino, who relied on the moon in their everyday life and spiritual beliefs, not know how a lunar eclipse works? They should have seen them many times, especially since two of them happened just three years prior to the Columbus eclipse. So I decided to look for the original source of this story. And it turned out it comes from a book called The Life of the Admiral Christopher Columbus, written by his youngest son, Fernando Columbus, or Hernando Colón. He was in Jamaica during the trip with his father and witnessed those events at the age of 15. But it was only when he was almost 50 that he recorded them in his father's biography book. His book can be found online and an English translation is available. The full story takes a few pages, so if you wish to read it, there is a link in the description. But basically, there is really just one record of this story, which comes from a rather biased source, a man writing a book to glorify his father. He does mention, though, that the Taino were familiar with lunar eclipses, but they had seen previous ones as the signs of punishment from the gods. They did not know what caused them or that they occurred at set times. So they simply didn't believe that anyone on Earth could predict an eclipse which made them convinced that Columbus had received a divine revelation. At least that's according to the sign of Columbus, so. The story was later repeated by other authors and became part of the Columbus greatness narrative. But the truth is, it's unclear whether the Taino could actually be tricked like that. The Maya civilization next door could accurately predict eclipses centuries earlier. But were the Taino advanced enough in astronomy to do the same? The assumption is probably not, but there is no evidence either way. What we do know for sure is that the eclipse really happened. The events we're talking about occurred on the 1st of March 1504. Quite often, total lunar eclipse happens in the middle of the night or right before dawn. But what was so special about that lunar eclipse is that it could be observed in Jamaica relatively early, at about half past seven in the evening local time on the 29th of February. So the Spanish and Taino could definitely see the red moon for almost an hour, provided there were no clouds. So, is the total lunar eclipse on March 13th to 14th, 2025, is exactly the same as the so-called Columbus eclipse? Yeah, actually more than you think. Lunar eclipses occur when Earth is between the Sun and the Moon, casting a shadow across the lunar surface, and they can only be visible in certain parts of the planet and certain times of the year. Saros is a term in astronomy that refers to a cycle that lasts just over 18 years after which the Earth Moon and Sun align similarly, causing nearly identical eclipses to recur in a predictable pattern. But because this is not a round number, they happen at different times of the year and the location in the sky is different. But there is also the Hypersaros, which is a cycle of about 521 years. Eclipses separated by Hypersaros have similar depth, meaning the amount of Earth shadow cast over the moon is nearly the same, appear very close to the same location in the sky, and occur at the same time of the year, or almost the same. Now look at these two dates. They're precisely 521 years apart. Remember, in 1504, Europeans used the Julian calendar. Today, we're using the Gregorian calendar. 
which was introduced in different countries in different times. Currently, the Julian calendar is 13 days behind the Gregorian calendar, which means if we hadn't switched calendars, the current eclipse in 2025 would have occurred on the 1st of March, same date, just a little later at night. So yeah, this red moon that people in the Americas were able to witness on the 14th of March 2025 was pretty much the same as the one that appeared to the Spanish and the Taino in 1504. The video you see now is my attempt to capture this most historic eclipse in Jamaica from Kingston. I don't have any proper equipment for this and unfortunately the sky was very overcast. But despite this, here are a few shots and the moon did get red for just a few minutes before the total eclipse and then it was fully covered by the clouds. If you're wondering why the moon turns red, it's due to the same effect that gives sunrises and sunsets their reddish color. During a total lunar eclipse, the Earth blocks the direct sunlight from reaching the Moon, but some light still goes through Earth's atmosphere, while shorter wavelengths like blue and green scatter, the longer wavelengths like red and orange get redirected to the Moon. This gives the Moon a deep copper or reddish glow. Blood Moon, although not a scientific term, is commonly used to describe the appearance of a total lunar eclipse. On that night I continued waiting and by 2.30am the sky cleared a bit, so I was lucky to witness the end of this historic eclipse. People in other parts of Jamaica were not as lucky as it was raining there the entire time. What about you guys? Have you had the chance to witness a total lunar eclipse before? Maybe even this one? Please share in the comments below. But like my friend mentioned, who was also trying to capture this eclipse, if only Columbus had the same luck with the weather, Jamaica's history might have been quite different. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this story. Please check the video description for the list of references, some of which are original sources from the 16th century. Thank you so much. And as always, special thanks to all our patrons for their continued support. I'll see you in the next video very soon. Feel free to watch this one next.